and gentlemen, this is your man, Real Deal, Stephen Steele, coming to you live this Tuesday, April 16th, 2024, a little bit after the hour of 7 p.m. in my neck of the woods, give or take an hour or two, depending on where you're joining us from, and of course, some of you are joining us from overseas as well, so welcome to you. We've got an exciting, exciting space. Listen, Trump Tuesday is our station as MAGA meme coin is sweeping the nation. How about them apples? Uh, we've got some incredible news coming your way tonight. Sit tight for that, of course, as we discuss uh, the news cycle and all things Trump related since the last time we have all convened. And of course, the exciting, magnificent things that we've uh, been at work on with MAGA meme coin. Uh, without any further ado, I'm going to hand it over to the host of the most, my favorite Trump impersonator on planet Earth, Sean Farage. What's up, God? What's up, Sean? What's going on, Steve? I think you just tried to speak French to me, and uh, you know, so I don't know very well French. I, I think part very of me well. to say, I think part of me wanted to say, "What's up, Cuz?" <laughs> Cuz, yeah, I heard a duh, and then I heard a word that I've never heard before. Hey, we could be cousins, who knows? I have no idea. But I got along very well with France. You know, I did very well. And uh, Macron, he's an interesting guy. Trudeau's also kind of French, but he's also Cuban. I heard he's related to Fidel. Might be Fidel's son. Anyway, uh, good evening to everybody. Happy Trump Tuesday. Uh, I know today's going to be an exciting space tonight. I, uh, I've heard what's in store, and I will tell you, it's something that you're going to, it's probably going to make a lot of people... Uh, really fired up when uh, when they hear about uh, when they hear the announcement. Let's just go ahead and say that. Uh, apologies for the link switch. There was a link, and uh, I tried to launch the space, and it uh, it launched worse than it was a worse launch than Ronda Sanctimonious when he tried to launch his campaign. You know what I'm talking about? Failure to launch. It was terrible. Uh, so we got the new link, same title. Share it out to everybody who you know. Uh, let's get everybody in here to get hyped up about this announcement. Be really big when that does occur. Obviously, there's been a lot of things happening in the news cycle. There was uh, it, the attacks on uh, Israel over the weekend from Iran. And I don't really want to get too much into that because, you know, all the details are still getting out. Um, but the big news, Trump-related, actual Trump-related news, is this trial out of Manhattan where you are seeing the full, the 100% full uh, results, the full uh, uh, strength of this government at work. And uh, if it's not getting you upset, I really don't know what will. And I'm not here to anger people. I don't want to, you know, be that guy who radicalizes people and all of a sudden, well, I heard this on a space and so I'm going to go do something terrible. That's not what I'm encouraging. But what I want everyone to focus on is just if they can do this to Donald Trump, if they can go ahead and you know, uh, gag order him over factual information regarding this uh, this judge's daughter and who may or may not have a financial interest in the uh, in the case here. Um, if they can go ahead and do that to him, they can do it to you. And my my thought process has been like this before Donald Trump. The less involvement the government has in my life, the more free I am. The more free my family is. Uh, you know, and, and, and the better off things are, you know, with less government involvement, things are absolutely better off. And um, I think you're seeing that now this trial in Manhattan. I mean, to tell the guy and the case is 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 garbage. Like it's a, there shouldn't even be a case. Right. I mean, there's a letter from Stormy Daniels and Michael Cohen letter. Right. That this whole thing never happened. And Trump had no knowledge of it, et cetera, et cetera. The case that there should be no case. OK, um, but there is one because Alvin Bragg is a tyrant. He is funded by George Soros, like that NGO that I'm sure everybody has heard about this morning um, that is telling illegal immigrants to come here and vote. So the left told us that it would never happen. Oh, it's only going to be rare. It's not going to happen enough. By the way, a non-citizen voting in our election, someone who does not constitutionally have the right to vote, one is more than enough. Uh, and that should be where it ends. There should be safeguards in place no matter what. I mean especially for a party that calls itself the Democrat Party that wants to use, you know, the democratic process, one vote, one voice, right? One person, one vote. Uh, you are now taking the weight of the vote of members of their own party, whether they are 
you know, voting citizens, women, black Americans, white Americans, Spanish Americans, you're taking people who are registered to vote, making their vote mean less because you are now encouraging people who do not have the constitutional right to vote to participate and vote in our elections. And you just can't do that. I'm sorry. That can't happen. And it's up to everybody uh, at, at the state level to make sure that their states start to implement safeguards for the election because federally, government just doesn't have that power. I know everyone say, well, we could pass legislation. No, you can't. Federal government does not have jurisdictions over your elections. It is 50 statewide elections when it comes to uh, presidential races. Anyway, we move on from that. We look at this situation in Manhattan. Uh, it's a disgrace. I mean, you have a, a district attorney. And, and folks, like crime is a thing in New York City. And it has been a thing for a while. And it is always going to be a thing. It was a thing under Rudy Giuliani. However, it was a thing that was under control under Rudy Giuliani. And understand, there's never going to be a society where there's zero crime rate. The only place, you know, places in the universe where there are zero crimes committed is where there are zero people, okay? The crime rate on the moon is zero because there are no people there to commit crimes. Understand what I'm saying? Uh, and that's not saying we have to get rid of people, right? We just have to make it harder or less enticing for individuals to commit those crimes, okay? Uh, and no, that would mean enforcing the law, right? If you steal from a grocery store or a bodega or, a, you know, a small business or a deli in New York City, there will be consequences. And they're not consequences that you can just shrug off or shake off like water off a duck's back. It have to be severe consequences. I'm not saying the death penalty for stealing a candy bar. That's not what I'm saying. But you have to make it less enticing for someone to shoplift. You have to make it less enticing uh, and more intimidating for somebody to commit the violent crime. And cashless bail certainly is not a deterrent. It's an encourager. It's an enabler. And so you have a district attorney in New York City who is enabling criminals, empowering criminals, encouraging criminals, all while his priority is one thing and one thing only, and that is prosecuting Donald Trump. And you're seeing, you are seeing crimes committed across the city violent crimes, people coming at each other with baseball bats over parking disputes, which probably would happen anyway because it is New York City and it's crazy over there. The difference is those people would have been held accountable in the past and now they're not being held accountable, right? So this is where we're at in New York City and now you actually have a judge who is sitting down and, and, and gagging Donald Trump unconstitutionally, gagging Donald Trump and now telling him that he's not even going to be allowed to attend his son's graduation. I mean, this just goes to show you the war that the left is really waging, not just on our country, folks, but on the nuclear family. Removing the father from the scene, removing the father from the picture, lawfare, the weaponization of government against the citizens. And this, to me, is the most egregious. You don't want to go after him. You want to go after him for Trump Tower? You want to say the guy committed fraud? He'll handle that with you. Leave the kids out of this. Because now you're going to take Barron Trump, who is apparently a phenomenal scholar. A very bright kid. He's proud of his achievements scholastically. Melania is very proud of him. Donald is very proud of him. And he's now going to have to walk at his high school graduation. And it seems like his father is going to be absent from that scene. You want to strike a nerve with families across the United States? And I'm not just talking men. I'm talking women, too. You want to play up this abortion role? And, and I'm, I, look, we, we can get into a pro-life debate on a different space, okay? Or a pro-choice, whatever you feel. I think Donald Trump's handling of this issue has been pretty good, saying that it's a state issue because constitutionally that's what it is based off of what the Supreme Court ruled. But you want to look at a mother, you know, a suburban mom, who is pro-choice, let's say. She thinks that it's a woman's right to have an abortion. But then she sees, you know, her high school senior getting ready to graduate. She sees the judge tell Donald Trump that he's not allowed to attend his son's graduation. That mom is looking at that government and saying, you know what, that's too much. That is too much. And I think the more, this is the thing, the more they flex their muscles at Donald Trump and try to intimidate him and his supporters with gag orders and prosecutions and all of this. The more they do that, 
I think the more it reverberates in the political sphere, and it starts to shake all the way down to normal voters who don't give a shit, who now all of a sudden do give a shit, pardon my French, but I've, I've been wanting to drop foul words on my show all week, and I, I'm not supposed to do that, and I don't do that, and I don't want to do it here. It's just I'm very upset about it because, again, if they can do this to Trump, they can do this to you. The normal, everyday voter who realizes that things are expensive in the supermarket and realizes that the wars around the world and the world is very unstable and realizes that there's an influx of people coming across the border and sees these changes but doesn't understand it. And then this Trump trial is in the news and they see them keeping a father away from his son's graduation. That could be another one of these moments, a mugshot moment. I call it, you know what I call it. It was the Mona Lisa of mugshots. Nobody's ever seen a better mugshot. You know that. I know that. We all know it. That was beautiful. They didn't expect it. And we raised a lot of money. And it's a beautiful picture. More beautiful than some of the paintings that Hunter Biden painted when he was on crack. And, you know, he smoked a lot of crack and did a lot of that. You know, people see that. They saw the mugshot and they said, really? Right? People are now going to see this, this gag order. He's not allowed to respond to the ambushes that he's being put through in the press. And it's going to make him a sympathetic figure. It's going to murder him. There's going to be a Mandela effect here. If he violates this gag order and they want to impose a 30-day jail sentence and they go forward with it, Donald Trump is your next president and it ain't even close. Because you've seen the reaction of people in the media over of Vladimir Putin. They say, oh, he jails his political opponents. Castro, these Middle Eastern countries, some of them do it. And we hear about how, oh, it's fascist and we wouldn't want to do that. And now all of a sudden, if they do that to Donald Trump, for what? For saying the judge's daughter is corrupt? She is. Everybody can see this evidence out there. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Laura Loomer exposed it over a month ago about how Judge Juan Merchan's daughter ran a firm that was tied to Adam Schiff, donated to Joe Biden, donated to Kamala Harris. She has a financial interest, a financial stake in the case that her father sits in. It's unbelievable, right? So all of this is going on. Jury selection is going on in New York City, and the American voter is watching. And fundraising numbers are beginning to tick up. And I don't think anyone, I really don't think the majority of people care about the verdict. I think what they're most concerned about is the treatment. Is this going to be fair? And it's happening in New York. It's not going to be fair. And unfortunately, it's a double-edged sword, right? It's a catch-20. This is like a win-lose for us, right? The more unfair it is, the worse it is because the government's flexing its muscles and setting dangerous precedents. But the more blatantly unfair it is, the better it is for Trump to get his message out to the American people. Say, hey, look what they're doing to me. And they will do this to you if you don't stay in line. They're going to get me out of the way first, and then they're going to do this to you. And when I say you, anything, anybody who's listening to this space now, later, whatever, that you are passionate about, you're passionate about fitness, well, guess what? Running has been linked to white supremacy. If you go running, you're a racist. You're passionate about diet, nutrition, well, you know what? If you don't accept the fact that you have to eat bugs to get rid of cow farts, you obviously want the climate to change so drastically that the world ends. You're, 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 you're passionate about crypto, money. Well, if you don't step in line or fall in line and accept CBDCs so that the government knows exactly what you're doing, you're a financial terrorist, right? You saw what they've done to J6ers. And that's the last thing I want to talk about is this Fisher versus the United States hearing today in front of the Supreme Court. Major, major case where the application of the uh, 1512, the um, DOJ 1512 obstructing an official proceeding the arguments were heard in Fisher versus the United States, and a lot of people are saying that they expect that application, the way the DOJ has been using that against January 6th, is to be ruled inappropriate. Meaning, it overturns a lot of the sentences, the 350 plus J6ers who've been charged with that. It will overturn those convictions. It will wipe them out. Donald Trump has also been charged with it, and the argument is that that law, that obstruction of an official proceeding, 1512 sections 1 and 2, uh, were put in place to to deter or to punish evidence tampering and witness tampering, not occupying a building and trespassing. There is already a law on the books that makes insurrection illegal. 
If there was an insurrection on January 6th, why was nobody charged under 18 U.S. Code Section 2383, the Rebellion and Insurrection Act? The easy answer? Because there was no insurrection. And they couldn't get away with charging anybody under that act. So you're watching as the weaponized government continues to A, flex its muscles in the Trump case, and B, watch some of their strongest and most effective cases for messaging purposes and narrative construction fall apart. That Supreme Court ruling is supposed to be in June. I do like to look at it and say, you know, while it looks bad now, these illegals coming across the border, they're being told to vote for Joe Biden. While these things are scary, they're meant to demoralize us, and you just can't let that happen. So I say take a step back, take a deep breath. Look at everything and look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, what can I do? Can I organize at the state level to get voter ID and, and election integrity uh, measures passed? Well, you can. If Scott Pressler can do it, you can do it. But, Sean, I have a job. I understand. Everybody does. Everybody's got to work. If you find 30 minutes, an hour of your day to go on social media, message some people, tag some folks, try starting a group, uh, you know, even if it's not social media, maybe you're out with your friends, you want to start having conversations, you're at a supermarket, you want to start having, it's okay to network interpersonally and start to speak to people about what we can do in under seven months to save the country. If we don't do those things, we won't have a country. So we're in now we're never territory, but the good news is the power rests in our hands. The good news is, from a standpoint politically, the more they go after Trump, the stronger he becomes. It's like Obi-Wan Kenobi. If you strike me down, I'll become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. And I think we're on the precipice of that. Also, good news is that RFK is going to be on. He says he's going to be on the ballot in all 50 states, and that's going to hurt Joe Biden. And we've seen the left panic over that as well. In a three-way race, Donald Trump leads very comfortably. That doesn't mean take your foot off the gas if RFK is on, uh, on the ballot in all 50 states. That means push even harder. And for the project, obviously, you know how we react to political stimuli. You know how sometimes this has been used as a protest project. When the mugshot came out, a lot of people bought. The price jumped, right? We increased our holder count, which is always increasing day over day. You know, the fact that this is happening, he's back in the news, it's great for us as well. Not as great as the news we're going to be getting later tonight, but that's great as well. That's what I've been thinking about and looking at in the news cycle. Uh, I want to pass this on to Stephen who is uh, sitting pretty right there. For some updates on your end there, Stephen, how are you? I'm doing great. We've been uh, working round the clock uh, over here, um, and uh, things are going really well. Uh, obviously, an accumulation period, uh, as we have it right now, uh, well over 17,000 holders right now on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, and obviously, the uh, holders are, holder count keeps increasing exponentially among the three other blockchains. Um, one word, one word of the theme uh, of where we're headed and where what we've already accomplished and where we're headed, and that is unprecedented. And like I've said before, we are the first mover. We are the pollen. Uh, we are the pioneers of Polyfy, and everything we do going forward has been kind of unprecedented. And the news that we are going to be having shortly, I believe, also will be a reflection of that. Also, wanted to. Uh, of course, welcome uh, our our latest partner, uh, Dom, uh, who's been just uh, an exceptional addition to the team. And uh, it's a really natural uh, welcome addition. And so um, welcome to Dom. Dom, how are you feeling, man? Feeling amazing. How about yourself, brother? Good, good, good. Uh, yeah, a lot to digest uh, in the news cycles this week. And I know you've been uh, on top of it uh, almost more than almost more than anyone. Uh <laughs> what, what do you think has been most most notable about the the news cycle so far this week, in your opinion? Not to be too biased, uh, I would, you know, I guess the easy answer would be like to focus on the negatives, the Baron Trump thing, <clears throat> and things like that. But honestly, in terms of just the culture, President Trump has made yet another monumental leap in culture. Uh, I just reported that DJ Academics, which is without a doubt... A lot of people might not know he's without a doubt the most relevant, the most popular, the most credible blogger and journalist in hip hop. Large and Charlemagne, it don't matter what platform you have or you could provide, they don't have his numbers. He's currently at President Trump's house right now. And from what I'm being told, I don't, I can't, well, I'm not going to confirm, but you know, there's a great possibility he'll be interviewing President Trump tomorrow on Rumble. Something like this truly would have been considered a fever dream 
four years ago to talk about the top hip hop blogger or journalist and also a streamer at that, which, you know, the kids, they love streaming. That's the new generation for us to be so intertwined with current culture. It's a dream come true. It's no longer getting to the point where it's the opposition of culture, but it's become intertwined and we're affecting the culture and shifting it in our direction. It's a win-win everywhere. Just seeing that he's at the Mar-a-Lago, it's truly monumental because it shows that once you get, I mean, once you gain media, you gain everything. So President Trump, you know, he had the rappers and things, whatnot. But now we're about to see the next transition over these next two months of media, liberal leftist media, uh, urban media, start to give President Trump favorable uh, news. And that affects the minds and souls of the people. So I'm super excited. And I've just, you know, I've been pretty ecstatic over the updates I've been seeing myself. Yeah, I, right on. Can I ask you a question about that real quick, just about his reach, DJ Academics? I'm not, I'm not yeah. familiar with him. Would you say, unbiased, right, that he has the ability to move the needle more than, let's say, because you mentioned liberal media, more than like a CNN or an MSNBC? Yeah. Do you think he can move without the needle more? Without a freaking doubt, because after the DJ Academics, you got the cost of knots, the speed, these, the streaming kids. So getting DJ Academics leads not only to hip hop. But it brings President Trump even deeper into streaming. And you'll see that when he goes to the UFC because UFC and Rumble have a deal. It's all intertwined. And DJ Academics is also working with Rumble as well. So he's not only he's breaking up the industries and making it cool, he's making Rumble cool, all these things. But DJ Academics is very, 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 uh, very credible. I mean, dude, like, if anyone sees Takashi 6 9 that dude with the rainbow hair, People don't even have to listen to rap, but they might have seen the kid with the rainbow hair a few years ago. DJ Gim has created that guy. He completely created that guy. Completely created that guy from his marketing campaign, just from promoting him. He created him alone. He created a plethora of rappers. He can influence people. If he can make people famous, he can definitely influence people. And just now, just two days ago, you know the Drake diss. I don't know if people follow hip hop. Drake is the number one rapper right now in the world, and he's beefing with a lot of different rappers. Well, DJ Academics is the one person that got the exclusive that had the diss songs. He's the only person that they trust to send this exclusive to to push out to the world. So when I say his impact is massive, it's unreal. It's unreal. If you got like a leak song or something, you would want to send it to him because it's going to move and it's going to influence. He has the influence. No one can compete with his influence right now in terms of blogging on hip hop. Nobody. Yeah, that that is phenomenal. Um, I, I, in addition to the uh, the aforementioned uh, that you brought up, uh, we've seen some <laughs> pretty interesting paradigm shifts um, with the culture from from celebrities who, uh, in part, made a made a name for themselves on social media as being some of the. Uh, uh, most well-known tr Trump haters out there, names like Michael Rapaport, etc. <laughs> now saying uh, that there's a really uh, solid probability that they're actually be uh, voting for Trump. <clears throat> In your opinion, because uh, you cover even you you cover the culture stuff even much more so than I do. In your opinion, what is predominant? What's most What's most predominantly to attribute uh, for this paradigm shift that we're seeing right now? In your opinion, Dom? <clears throat> in the culture? It just not broke out, but I heard the last thing you said, in my opinion, for the culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, yeah. in your opinion, what, do you, what mm -hmm. do you attribute this paradigm shift mostly to? Oh, 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 man, easily. Council culture. We give all praise to council culture. We give all praise to council culture because I witnessed it myself and all of you did as well, how conservatives lost the culture. I don't know if you guys too much remember. I mean, I'm only 30 years old. I just turned 30 this year, but I distinctly remember that growing up that media was conservative. I mean, look at all of the movies we had, Rambo, etc., Expendables and all these type of movies uh, that exist way back then. Die Hard. It's all about a masculine man. They always have the hot girl, the wife, damsel in distress. All those things are actually conservative. If you look all the way down to Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, they have to say grace every time they're about to eat. You look at the movies, I mean, TV shows before that, you got Good Time, where it talks about the dangers of gang banging, the dangers of not having a nuclear family, the dangers of, of doing drugs. These were conservative values being instilled in people. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, it talked about fatherhood. You know, it talked about the dangers of hanging around the wrong crowd yet again. And they also praised God. 
had church episodes, had episodes of them saying grace. It wasn't until conservatives started canceling liberals and mainly homosexuality that they got the amount of support they have now to where they took over Hollywood and they took over the American culture because once you try to counsel people so far and you push them to a wall, they become the victim. Now, one thing about the American culture, we love the underdog. As soon as someone becomes a victim and underdog, it's only a matter of time before they become the dominant leading party. Because the patriotic spirit itself is about fighting for the underdog. That's just the American spirit, uh, spirit, the citizen spirit. We started burning Harry Potter books. We canceled hip hop conservatives. We canceled rock and roll. We canceled TV shows. We canceled anything with homosexuality. We canceled a lot of things. We, we, we truly did. And it led to liberals getting more empathy from Congress, from Senate, getting more laws passed in their favor to protect them. Because once people are being pushed so far, now they need protection. And once the government starts to protect you, can't nobody touch you. And we all can agree on that. And we're seeing that happening now. We're starting to see the government protect conservatism yet again. Nothing new is under the sun. We're just seeing the next transition in what was already. Yeah, thank you for that. And uh, yeah, super, super keen insights and an interesting perspective there. Yeah, we, we kind of saw, <laughs> I kind of con I concur with you. We, we saw the pendulum swing one way. And then there's an inevitable backlash to, for lack of a better term, the left egregiously overplaying their hand for so many years and just completely dominating the culture <laughs> in every facet from music to movies to film to uh, literature, etc. And even the, the Zoomers that uh, I'm friends with and talk to and my nephew, etc., there is definitely a, a strong backlash that uh, has been brewing uh, um, among large segments of that generation because uh, what what young person likes to be force fed uh, their their ethos you know at, at every facet and and now uh, the, since the left has dominated all our institutions so heartily um, it's not cool <laughs> it's just not cool at all and so it's kind of the Streisand effect kind of going on with Trump here is don't listen to that guy he's very dangerous don't listen to him and the more they tell uh, people not to listen to him I think it's having the opposite intended effect yeah I love what you just stated with saying it's not cool because that's more exclusive to the youth so something I noticed when I had started last year I had created a Generation Z group called More Blue we got like 15,000 or so followers or something, I think, in like a month or two. And we were just recruiting Gen Z, uh, Gen Z people of the Gen Z generation just to have a larger platform. So I was using my platform to promote them for free and things because Joe Biden stated that he was going to start focusing on Gen Z. Most of you guys remember, they were focusing heavily on Gen Z propaganda last year. So I spent the time trying to put a lot of young conservatives in position, try to extend the platform out to them. But one thing I learned by those short four or five months of working with the Gen Z is how their culture is. It's so anti, and I'm not talking about just conservative Gen Z. Gen Z as a whole, their culture, because of TikTok, because of how far they pushed everyone, it's not cool no more. It's become government approved. The thing is, every young generation want to fight back against the man. All of us will be young. That's the most rebellious time of our life. So now that you're being forced to accept these things, so now that you're finding out that your president, your government says it's cool, nobody can do it now. They ended up making the rebellion of being a leftist uncool because now the government is out protesting with them. Now the government is out uh, holding up their fists with them. The government looks like the people. When the government starts imitating the people, the people want shit to do with it no more. It's no longer cool because they've made it official to be a leftist. It's the official political party. No young person wants that. And most importantly, the whole culture are based. These kids love saying they're based. They love saying based this, based that. The whole ideology of being based is pretty much saying I don't give a fuck. And you can't be based being politically correct. I've seen what they consider comedy. Did you know that Gen Z is considered the most, they have the darkest humor out of all generations alive right now? Their jokes are darker than any of our generations. You can't have dark humor and be liberal. Seriously, you can't. If you look at some of the shit they laugh at, it's like there's no way this generation is liberal. I'm serious. I'm serious. Like, it's not politically correct at all. So they've lost the culture. They lost the youth. And they've even lost millennials. I'm, they're in a bad shape. I won't lie to you. They're in a bad shape. Well, let's say conservatism is the new counterculture. 
that's what has been said for a while. And, you know, you look back into the 90s, right? Punk rock and the grunge movement and Rage Against the Machine and all those groups. And they're all, they are the machine now. But there's a new group of people who are cutting holes in their genes, right? You weren't supposed to do that. Now you're doing, like you said, I think, I think both of you guys hit on it. And I, I couldn't agree more. When you're a kid, you are, you are listening, you're hearing what, the, what authority is telling you to do. And you're most likely thinking about how you can do the opposite. You have a curfew, you're, you're, you're going to sneak out, you're going to try and stay out later than you want. Now, I did the same thing. The only thing I didn't do, thankfully, when I was a kid, when some, someone told me not to do something was do drugs. That's, that's the only thing I didn't do. You know, and, and I'm happy that I didn't do that. But everything else, you know, don't do this. I found a way to do it, right? You know, and, uh, and it was fun. That's, that's fun. You know, obe obeying as a child is always kind of like whatever. I mean, you, you don't want to be disrespectful. But you're a kid. You're going to take your chances. And I think um, I think what you said about, you know, TikTok and the government kind of being one thing and now the kids are looking at it saying, well, I want to be the other thing. I think you have that. And I think you have sanity. I think there are kids in schools who are looking at other girls and going, that's not a boy. Come on now, right? I mean, especially athletes and the cool kids in high school, right? The jocks that are walking around the hallway in their football jerseys. They know that girls aren't supposed to be playing in women's sports and men aren't supposed to be playing. Uh, girls aren't supposed to be playing in men's sports and men aren't supposed to be playing in women's sports. And they know the deal. And then they have influence among their social circles. I always say the most powerful person isn't the teacher in the classroom. It's the student because the student with an idea is more relatable to the entire rest of the class. The teacher isn't. A 30-something, 40-something, 50-something-year-old teacher who is trying to explain an idea to a kid Right. If you had a 50 year old man explaining this is sliced bread and I want to I want to teach you kids about sliced bread. A lot of the kids are going to think br bread is gross. But if one of their classmates came up and said, hey, this is sliced bread and it tastes great, they're all going to eat the freaking bread. And that's the deal. That's why reaching down, doing what you did down with the kids is important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know who's got a. Oh, yeah. I know who has a hot mic. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, we're just gonna we're just gonna take a pause for the cause here. I want you all to hear this one minute of audio, and then we're gonna cut to our special guest. He loves the game. He loves the game. He has fun with it, and he's very good at it. I'm an agent provocateur. Win at all costs mentality. The Nixon tattoo is really all you need to know about Roger. Roger saw something that nobody else saw back in the early 80s. I suggested that Trump should explore a bid for the presidency. He created Donald Trump as a political figure. What have I lied about? Have you spoken with the WikiLeaks founder? You're awake tonight. Roger, you can't just say that. I revel in your hatred because if I weren't effective, you wouldn't hate me. Let's go. Let's go. It's the one and only political firebrand, absolute legend, and of course, host with the most also of the Stone Zone. And so many more, so much more. I mean, I mean, where do you even start? It's the one and only Roger Stone. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are announcing an official partnership with Roger Stone. MAGA meme coin, Roger Stone 2024. Let's go. Roger, how you feeling, man? Uh, I feel absolutely great. Uh, watching President Trump in Harlem tonight, uh, cutting deeply into traditionally Democratic voting groups did my heart good. Uh, and I'm really, really delighted to be with you tonight. It's been a long day, heavy with politics. I've been watching jury selection. I've been watching the president. I've been watching public reaction. Uh, despite the, the uh, tsunami of lawfare arrayed against him, despite the outrageousness of these charges, I think he grows stronger by the minute, stronger by the hour, stronger by the day. So for, t for me, it's been a very, very exciting day. Yeah, a, a lot, a lot going on. And if there's any one person that I think thrives on chaos and in the midst of it, 
and has come out on top uh, almost as a consequence of it. I think it's you, Roger. Um, to what do you attribute that uh, that skill set? <laughs> well, I guess I, I would say because I've read the book Stone's Rules uh, with an introduction by Tucker Carlson, which is kind of like Sun Tzu's The Art of War or Machiavelli's The Prince. I wrote this book back in 2014. Uh, and it, it's uh, kind of everything I've learned about life. Uh, you don't have to be in politics to enjoy it. You don't have to be a, a America first or a Trump supporter or a Republican or a conservative. Uh, you can be completely non-political, but there are lessons in here for everybody, whether you're uh, in retail, whether you're in tech, whether you're in entertainment, doesn't matter what you are, uh, what field you're in. Uh, these are the lives, rules that I have lived by. These are the rules that have, frankly, uh, saved. Uh, you broke up just a little bit there, uh, Roger. Hopefully we can uh, get you back uh, real shortly. Go ahead. I think you're back. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, you're so back. That, that is what that is to what I have uh, attributed my longevity. And I'm really, look, I, I'm new to crypto, but because I work uh, with a lot of young libertarians who are very hip to it, uh, many people told me, I even heard about Magamine Coin. Uh, before I read about it, before you guys talked to me. Uh, and I'm very proud of this strategic partnership. I mean, uh, yes, I'm uh, we lost you. <laughs> lost you again there, Roger. Sorry. Um, the last I thing I heard. Yeah. Okay. You're back. You're back. Uh, uh, <laughs> so I apologize. Where did I leave off? Tell me where I left off. Um, uh, how you heard of the, you actually heard of this project before, uh, we even, uh, uh, before we even started talking. Yeah, um, look, so, as, yeah. I, as I said. It seems like his mic uh, keeps muting. I'm sorry, Roger. Right? I think you're right. back. Yeah, I probably don't know why I'm just kind of not touching it. It's just it has a life of its own. Probably <laughs> the probably the deep state be my guess. Uh, no, so what I was saying was that, uh, yes, I'm new to crypto. I, I work with a lot of young libertarians who are very hip to it. Uh, many of them mentioned MAGA meme coin to me. I have many friends who have done very well with the coin. Yes, there is a benefit to me. Yes, my being here is sponsored. Uh, I am, I've entered a strategic partnership. The more of this uh, coin we sell, the more homeless veterans we are going to help. The more uh, children who are, who are being abused, who are being sex trafficked, we're going to protect. I did a huge amount of due diligence and study uh, of the management team uh, and the development team at MAGA Mean Corn, Coin, and it's very, very impressive. So uh, I'm sipping my sticking my toe in the water here in the crypto world. This is all new to me, but I'm very, very proud of the association, and I'm I'm going to be talking to many others about uh, this great coin, which commemorates the greatest political reform movement in American history, the MAGA movement. Let's go, Roger Epping Stone, ladies and gentlemen. Um, again, so we got Dom in the house, Roger Stone. You two, you two already know each other, though, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I am a giant fan of Dom Lucra. He, he takes a lot of crap for being a friend of mine. And in all honesty, I take a lot of crap for being a friend of his. But uh, he's fearless. He's meticulous about the facts. He's very careful about what he reports. I've never known him to to get out with, a, with anything that is half-baked or not accurate. Uh, he's gutsy. Uh, he's, uh, by the way, he was recognized this past New Year's Day as one of the uh, international best-dressed men in the world, the yearly list that I put out on New Year's Day. It's the 15th year. So, uh, Dom, it's uh, great to be here with you. Right on, right on. Well, as I was saying a little bit before, I was talking about a little bit before you came in the space, uh, Roger, um, this project um, and what we're building here has been, uh, if I had to describe one word, it would be unprecedented, unprecedented for many of the things that we've been doing successfully uh, merging politics and decentralized finance, so much so that we've become the first mover, as they say in the market, so the pioneer of a new category that the market is now calling PolyFi. So it's super exciting to be holding these spaces 
we're, we're merging both of these worlds and bringing you on board with us. I think there's no better way to exemplify the spirit of Polyfy, to exemplify this vision of what we're doing. And as you well know, Roger, if you're going to be pretty hard pressed to find one individual that's going to be talked about more on, on, on the world news stage in 2024 than Donald J. Trump. And I think this is going to be not only uh, tremendously bullish for what we're doing with MAGA meme coin, uh, but it's going to be hilarious and exciting as well. What do you say? First of all, the fact that you have started a whole new genre. Uh, so I get to be a part of history. This is what I'm excited about. We're, we're breaking new ground, just as Donald Trump was the first uh, business person to be elected president. Prior to Trump, uh, all presidents were senators, governors, congressmen, generals, or had served in the government. The, Donald Trump broke the mold, uh, and he changed the rules. He's the first president to be elected without massive spending on on uh, network television uh, and network television advertising. Uh, he he doesn't you know he he is uh, not a politician. This is good. Uh, he's uh, he's a political leader. He's the leader of a movement, uh, but uh, he's he is his own man. In other words, he's not scripted. He's not handled. He's not managed. He's very much his own man. Uh, and the fact that you guys are making history uh, is very exciting to me. I'm really really excited about being a part of history. We're going to change the whole industry, I believe. Yes, let's go. I, I love it, and that's exactly where our head's at as well. And uh, I believe that the, the energy is just going to keep going into this project. And also just kind of, this has kind of been a de facto rallying cry of the whole populist MAGA movement, but on the blockchain. So it's just kind of an, an extension expression from that to a degree that we've never seen before. Now, of course, inevitably, we've seen a lot of uh, copycat projects kind of trying to harness or uh, some, of, some of the energy of what we're doing. But look, folks, there has never been a more successful um, charity project with uh, philanthropic attributes as this one. We are nearing in now on nearly $2 million uh, in Ethereum donations to our charity partners uh, to both fight child trafficking and house homeless veterans Consequently, and I was talking with Roger about this uh, the other day, um, in part due to what we're doing here at MAGA Meme Coin, the uh, homeless veteran population in the whole Broward County era, a, uh, area has, has dropped significantly, significantly. So it's super rewarding. Obviously, we're all here for gains too, right? We are, we're all here for gains. We're all, and there's been extraordinary stories of people that have been with us since the beginning turning $2,000 uh, in Ethereum into $2 million in Ethereum. And we're going to keep hearing more exciting stories like that, but it's also great that we're bound by a, by a common ethos uh, that's uh, bigger than ourselves. You know what I mean, Roger? Uh, I completely agree. Look, we are, we're capitalists. Uh, we're entrepreneurs. We're businessmen and businesswomen. And we understand the economics uh, of what we're engaged in. Uh, but I also think that it's it's important that to make a statement, uh, and that statement is that Donald Trump has changed the face of American politics and certainly the grassroots of the Republican Party. Uh, this will continue beyond Donald Trump. Uh, that's why these coins are only going to long-term gain in value. Uh, and you're right, there's a lot of copycats out there. I saw that when I be began my due diligence. Uh, but uh, your charitable record is impeccable based on all my research. I think we're the only ones now doing that kind of thing at that kind of rate. There's a lot, there's a lot here to be extraordinarily proud of. Uh, and uh, I'm just uh, I'm a little in awe, and I don't get in awe, but this is a very exciting night for me. Well, we're thank you so much for that, and we're 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 super stoked and simultaneously humbled to have you here. Uh, and again, uh, as um, as the A team used to say in the '80s, I love it when a plan comes together and things are really coming together as as the election season just starts heating up. Dom Lucre, Roger Stone, Jackie Dutton, 
<laughs> Sean Farage, and you're a man, you're a man, uh, real deal, Stephen Steele, uh, and we're going to keep keep bringing it uh, every Tuesday, guys, and um, uh, we are just getting warmed up just as this election season uh, just keeps heating up, and just as uh, all eyes are going to be on Trump and the MAGA movement uh, in 2024, so will, consequently, they be on um, MAGA meme coin. Now, when we first started holding these spaces... Um, I stated my intentions as marketing director very clearly, setting my uh, setting the aspirations very high, where this would uh, eventually uh, be very well be so well positioned that it would be rivaling the likes of Shib, Shiba Inu and Dogecoin. Uh, certainly, p- many uh, not many, but a few people had uh, reservations about such levels of optimism when we were floating around 1 million, 2 million, 5 million, 10 million market cap. But now that we are trading, uh, with great stability around the 200 million market cap, um, and also accomplishing the amount that we have, uh, in the, uh, in the nine months that we've been in existence, It doesn't seem far-fetched at all. (laughs) And so uh, bringing Roger on, you guys, um, is just another reflection of our vision to keep next leveling this thing. If you want to be where the freaking energy is in 2024, whether you're a part of crypto now or not, this is where it's going. This is where it's going to keep heading. Watch this space. Watch this place because we're all just getting started. Let's go. Let's go. Um, uh, Roger, I don't, uh, uh, I guess we got a couple, couple speakers here. Um, let's, uh, just, uh, all I ask is, uh, for the, the guest speakers, just keep your points, uh, concise. Uh, and if you have a, uh, question for Roger or, uh, make sure that, uh, we just ask that, uh, keep things concise and respectful. Um, so, uh, let's go to Zeno. What's up, Zeno? Hey, Steven. What's up? What's up, Sean? Uh, wow. You guys got Mr. Stone on the show. Mr. Stone, uh, honor to have you on. Um, the, I'm glad that you, uh, you did your due diligence on this token. Uh, we put a lot of, of thought and effort into the early days of this token, um, forming the foundations so that it could be, um, so that it could withstand the political uh, what you, you might say, tempest uh, of the election cycle, and uh, the integrity of this token is is un, is is I would say um, rather unparalleled in this space. Crypto is known as an early technology, as all early technologies uh, uh, are prone to um, a lot of grifting and whatnot, and 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 shady dealings. But this token in particular. Uh, avoided all of that, and uh, we in part did that with the with the donations, as you mentioned. Um, a lot of tokens with taxes say that they're doing donations, and then you know they do a few, but then they they eventually just pocket the rest of it. But uh, us, you know, we've been posting the uh, the blockchain data of the donations since day one, so all of it's verified on the blockchain indelibly. Um, you, you cannot, that's one of the things you said that you speak to a lot of young libertarians, which is good to hear. Um, <laughs> and I think, I think you, you implied perhaps that many of them were in crypto. Um, uh, we're trying to get across the idea, the mission of this token primarily is not just to help Trump in the election, right? Financially, because we've given him quite a bit, quite a bit of money. Um, even by his standards, I would say. Um, and it's not just to help veterans. It's not just to help uh, efforts against child tra- uh, child sex trafficking globally, but it's also uh, a means of prolifer- A, proliferating MAGA, all right, proliferating the message, and B, getting MAGA, people in MAGA, to understand that, that blockchain technology is inherently conservative, it, it is, it is most, most technologies of the last 70 years have been inherently liberal and um, cryptography and blockchain tech are inherently conservative. They, they, by definition, they conserve data. 
They make sure if we replaced, for example, we spoke about this last time or not last time, but a, a, a few uh, a few um, spaces ago. But if it, if we were to replace the voting system with a blockchain system, um, you could theoretically have your own node on a network that ver that validates and verifies the uh, consensus of the voting system in your municipality. This would completely decentralize and make the voting system trustless, which is a good thing. In crypto, trustless means that there's no need for an intermediary party. There's no need for a third party. There's no need for someone on the outside in the private sector to come in and say, don't worry, guys, we've got it. Trust us. No, no, no. We want a trustless system. We want to rely on technology that is inherently trustless. And so everyone can see uh, everyone else's votes, but without identity attached to it. It's just a number. It's a hash. It's a um, public wallet address. So it's still anonymous voting, but everyone gets to see the vote count and where it came from. So it's a very interesting, uh, this kind of technology, I think, is going to be implemented with an, a libertarian and a conservative bent to it. And if it's not, it will be implemented with a socialist bent. And, and that's what we don't want. We don't want a global reserve currency that's on a private blockchain owned by the IMF. That's what we don't want. So we're, we're part of our mission is trying to get MAGA to understand that this technology is different. It is different this time. This one's not trying to hoodwink people. It's not trying to pull in a liberal agenda with it. It's, it's inherently conservative. I just wanted to say that, and, and thank you for coming on and, and, and joining us in our, in our effort. Well, let me address that, if I, if I may. One of the things that really attracted me to MAGA Mean Calling, in addition to your charitable activities uh, and your very cool artwork, was the full transparency of it, uh, was, the, was the full disclosure, so people can see exactly what's happening. Uh, and uh, you're, you're right, there's a lot of imitators out of there. I admit that I'm new to this whole, to this whole uh, genre, but the good works you're doing, plus, uh, I think, without any question, the coolest graphics out there, much cooler than I've seen on any of the other would-be uh, MAGA commemorative coins. So, uh, and my reference to young libertarians, perhaps it's just coincidental, but remember, I was in the Libertarian Party for two years when the Republican Party nominated uh, Mitt Romney, uh, even though I was a former young Republican national chairman, had worked for three Republican presidents, uh, I left for a couple of years because I couldn't stomach uh, Mitt Romney. I got to work with and meet a lot of younger, cool libertarians. It seemed to me there was a disproportionate number of them uh, in crypto, trying to explain crypto to me, inviting me to speak on crypto-based shows. I've done a number of other spaces that have been, uh, you know, about uh, about crypto. So it's uh, maybe that's a, maybe that's a good thing. I do I do agree with what you say about the need for this te technology uh, to be espousing freedom, economic and personal freedom. Uh, I think that's one of the key. Uh, tenants uh, to uh, to the entire MAGA movement. Yeah, well stated, well stated, and uh, th so much of this stuff uh, really <clears throat> kind of uh, interlocks with itself, really. So, um, th yeah, thank you. G great to hear from Zeno, and uh, great great insights as always. And um, uh, R Roger, it's just awesome, awesome to have you here. Uh, if uh, who else do we got here? Uh, let's go to go, ahead. go traveling vegan. Hey guys, how are you? I'm here in South Florida here at the uh, uh, at the mothership here, the government in exile, Palm Beach, Florida, and not far from Roger. And Roger, it's great great to have you on board. Where uh, the the excitement has been expressed really really well, and I get I, in regard to that. I just feel like, I mean, I've been on these calls since November or maybe, no, early December. We just, we are like, we have, we have star power. We never, like we didn't have before. I mean, no, no, no offense to you guys who are, you know, you've got radio shows. Roger just takes our, 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 our token, 
our community to a whole other level. And hearing the call today was uh, tonight, being on the call tonight, just, uh, just made me, you know, understand it in a very deep way. And so uh, thank you, Roger, for, you know, seeing what you saw here and, and being a part of this. It really, it's, it's so meaningful to us. But I wanted to, uh, beyond that, I have two things to add. Regarding crypto and being basically conservative in nature, I've actually just thought about this. So one of these days I'm going to harvest, say, part of my bag and turn it into Ethereum, which then will be a capital event. And I'm gonna write a I'm gonna write what I think I would I would consider a big fat check to the government for the gain, right? And so once these politicians and Donald Trump is I think just understood it recently. When he said he's having fun with crypto, he's making money, and guess what? He has to write a check to the government. Once these politicians, and as an influencer, whatever influence I, whatever influence I have, it's not a lot, but w with the people I know, the politicians I know, I'm going to explain to them, guys, you can't be afraid of this. This is going to be the biggest tax revenue raiser that you've ever seen. Because every, basically every transaction is a capital event. Now, of course, it can go in reverse. We see how you can lose money on crypto. But based on the overall idea of scarcity and the appeal of tokens as they, as they come into fashion and, the, and as they have utility and use, I mean, the Magamine coin, there's no reason why Magamine coin can't someday... And someday soon, I hope, be in the Truth Social wallet that MAGA people can actually trade for, you know, goods and services or whatever it is. And at the end of the year, this is what's so exciting. This is why the government shouldn't be afraid of it. At the end of the tax year, me and you and everyone on this call is going to actually write the biggest tax payment that you've probably ever written in your life and that you'll continue to write. So I wanted to make that point, that the politicians, I think, are going to figure out, I hope they figure out, I think Donald Trump is figuring out, that this is going to be the largest tax revenue raiser, not, not just the meme, MAGA meme point, but the whole, the whole space. So uh, the next thing I'd like to say is, and some of you know, and we've talked about it before, on Truth Social, I created the MAGA meme coin group, the community group. It's three words, MAGA meme coin. And right now, I have a whopping 15 members on the, on the, in the group. And not all of us, I know that, that uh, we're people here, folks here are heavy in Twitter, and that's great. But, you know, we, we need to, I think we, uh, it's in, I'm going to say it like this. I think it's incumbent upon all of us to dabble and to, on a daily basis, be involved with on Truth Social. And I encourage you, I mean, I, I don't want 15 members, I want 150 members or, or even more than that. And so what am I going to do on this group? As I'm speaking right now, I've been taking notes. And if those of you who joined the group already, you know that I posted notes from last week's call. And so I'm doing the same thing for this call. So by, say, tomorrow morning or definitely by lunchtime tomorrow, I will have probably three posts because it's limited. I think it's 300 words or something. I have like a, a thousand to 2000 word analysis of tonight's call. So please, I encourage you to join the MAGA meme coin group on Truth Social. Tell your politicians, tell everybody that crypto is going to be the biggest tax raise that, 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 that governments have ever seen. And, um, and thank you, Roger, for joining our our community. That's all I want to say. Uh, many, many thanks for your comments. You know, today I was working on the graphics because at the front page at stonezone.com, I'm going to put up a, an ad where people can go to Magamine Coin, where also where they can learn how to purchase it. It's a sponsored ad. We fully disclose that. Uh, and uh, we're looking at various different uh, graphic schemes based off of your your website graphics. Uh, and I said to uh, my webmaster, I said, you know, this is really historic. This is 
we're in on history. This is going to change uh, a lot in this space. And uh, I'm particularly excited that you've kind of caught, founded this whole new genre uh, uh, within the crypto industry. So uh, it's, it's, it's historic. It's exciting. When the story of 2024 is written, and uh, frankly, history is written by the winners, and I intend to write it, well, this is going to be very prominent in my next book, The Making of the President 2024, How Donald Trump Retook the White House. Well, Let's awesome. go. Amazing. Go ahead, Amazing. Tom. Now, you know, I want to toss it over to so because Roger keeps coming back, too, and it's good to, good to hear from you, Roger. Of course, we, we know you did nothing wrong. We know that. Same. We know absolutely what we're talking about. It's tremendous. You do a wonderful job. Um, I want to toss it over to Jackie because Roger keeps talking about creating this new genre. And it was actually Jackie Dutton who coined the term in these spaces, Polyfy, which is now across the crypto universe. They have they call it Politify, but I, I prefer what Jackie called it. She coined the term as we were developing this whole new genre space, etc. So I want to toss it over to, uh, to Jackie because um, she hasn't said anything tonight. And I know she's stoked about uh, Roger Stone being here. So Jackie, what do you got going on? I have not stopped smiling for like the last 35 minutes. It's just been, it's so fun that we can finally talk about this. You guys don't know. I think it's been a full month at least that we knew that this was coming. And it's just been really hard to keep this a secret. It's, it's like, it's just been so amazing to have basically political strategy royalty attached to the project like doge has elon and we have roger stone and we have dom and we have steven and we have sean but we have roger stone with this project and i just think it's so it like it's one thing to be a meme coin and and yay the memes and the the images and the whatever and it's another to solidify a partnership with someone who is relevant and real and had a direct impact on making trump president in the first place the first time so we are just so like unbelievably proud and happy to have you with us roger we just think that this is i i'm like nerding out this is the coolest thing so um yeah aside from that i mean crypto the halving of bitcoin is in a couple days uh, usually what ends up happening is that miners have to kind of recoup some of their costs. So there usually is a little bit of a sell-off. But to balance that out, Hong Kong just approved ETFs for Bitcoin and Ethereum for their institutions. So I think it's not going to be a crazy correction for Bitcoin. But, you know, I don't know. Mercury's in retrograde and the Middle East is a mess right now. So who knows? But basically in, in the crypto world, the halving is the event that kind of is the precursor to what we anticipate to be a bull run. And you can go back and look at the chart every four years. It, have it show you the halving and then have it show you the next run up. So new all-time highs, much, much brighter days, bigger days, greener charts um, are on the horizon. And regardless of whatever's happening in, in, in big Bitcoin land and Ethereum land and everything else, this token has held pretty steady, not just in market cap, but also kind of around the, the dollar amount that it's held. So um, hugely promising events, obviously, this is a, you know, a great event. And then as we really get ready you know more of this trump news the hush trial all of these things start to unfold and then we get into something like the debates i mean i just think we're sitting so amazing right now um if sistine is in the audience and, and wants to talk a little more about what he sees on the chart and the patterns um but obviously this token kind of defies a little bit the the regular uh, market trends. So I'm just so excited that we now have Roger. Everybody knows we can all talk about it. And uh, you guys can see where we're going from here. And this isn't the last thing. Like, it's not like <laughs> we're done. Steven and I were on the phone last night for like two hours um, strategizing where we go from here and where we go long term. But um, yeah, for now, we're just going to live in the present and really celebrate this because this is a great day. Let's go. Uh, let, me, uh, let, 
Let's, yeah, by all means. Let me, let, 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 let me jump in here just for a second and say you have no idea how hard this secret has been to keep. I mean, I've known for some weeks that I, I was going to reach a, a strategic partnership with Magamine Carmen. I've been dying to tell General Flynn, who I was with uh, last Friday. I've been dying to tell Mayor Giuliani. I've been dying to tell the president. I haven't been able to tell anybody because we have kept it uh, a secret so we could have a big reveal tonight. But look, I'm going to be out there explaining to people uh, the good works that we are doing, uh, the value we are bringing, the quality of the development team, the uh, the transparency of it, the full disclosure of it. Uh, I'm excited to be out there as an advocate uh, telling people uh, about MAGA Mean Coin and why this is such a great opportunity. Uh, starting tonight, I will be texting and blasting uh, my supporters, my friends, people that I care about, because I, I think this is not only a great opportunity, I've disclosed that, yes, it's good for me, it's good for everybody on the call, it's good for anybody who owns it, but it, it is also good for the country because we are celebrating certain values. We're, we're commemorating certain values. Uh, and I think that's what's going to make this historic and memorable. Let's go. Love it. Love it. And I, I do see that um, uh, crypto news outlets are now getting on this. Uh, I, and we uh, just pin, uh, Jackie looks like she pinned it at the top of the nest. Uh, BSCN uh, now reporting breaking Polyfy Trump theme. Uh, MAGA meme coin announces partnership with political strategist Roger Stone. I just got a, another message from um, a uh, journalist and Benzinga. Looks like they're going to be um, uh, posting something very soon, too. And uh, I think things are just going to domino from here uh, in, in, in terms of this partnership. Look, um, we've already seen um, a number of things that haven't happened before, including uh, we are already seen, we're not even a year old, and we've already been seeing Amaga meme coin not only get covered in the top uh, crypto uh, news sources and publications, but just in mainstream finance now, it's starting to happen as well. I don't want to throw on the term revolution too loosely by any means, but I do think uh, between this team and what we're doing and how we've been positioning it, uh, that we are uh, we are positioning this to be one of the biggest cryptocurrencies on the planet. This is where the energy is going to be. Trump 2024 is the theme. MAGA meme coin is the extension, is the blockchain populist movement extension of that. Um, I just onboarded two more people today uh, and set them up with, uh, instructed them how to uh, buy some MAGA meme coin. They never bought a crypto before ever. Uh, one of them was actually my, my doctor, uh, and uh, he's uh, super excited about it. And uh, super, he's super excited to uh, be holding, <laughs> be seeing that little Trump icon uh, in, in his position. So this is another thing, uh, an, another one of our objectives with this is to onboard people in the space that typically wouldn't. And it's been so much fun uh, interacting with not only folks like uh, Roger, but uh, bringing Dom on board and Phenomenology, who's here now too. Uh, people that I just have a genuine appreciation for, uh, for what they do re respectively and to what they add to the culture. And we are setting up a legacy project, a culture, a culture coin as we move forward, where not only are we uh, making... Uh, striding forward and making excellent gains together, but we are also giving uh, uh, significant. We're giving significant amounts back to things that really matter, to things that are bigger than ourselves. Um, and uh, so, yeah, this is going to be a, a very, very exciting year. Oh, and speaking of how to buy and onboarding people, if you guys go up to the billboard announcements at the top um, and you scroll back, there are the links for how to buy two different ways. If you want to just use the super simple, easy way, downloading the Phantom Wallet and buying on Solana, um, that is the most user-friendly, simple experience that, uh, in my opinion, exists right now. So that video is step by step with my volume voice and my little, um, my little like you know vibey music in the background, and then um, the other video is how to buy and sell on Ethereum 
the hardcore DeFi way connecting to uh, Uniswap. So if if you're a little if you're feeling a little more advanced, you can try that that one. Um, but if you get really overwhelmed and you just want to buy on Solana and use uh, the Phantom Wallet, that is very user friendly and it gets you the exact same token, the exact same gains, whole, whole same 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 all across the board. And you can find all these tutorials on the on the homepage, right, of the website. Yes, on the website as well, and in the Telegram. Um, and if you guys are ever unsure at any point, please don't hesitate to go in the Telegram, ask us on Twitter. Uh, there's no such thing as a stupid question, and I know that it can be a really overwhelming process. I know people who are software engineers, and it took them like two weeks to figure out how to buy their first DeFi token. So there's no shame in asking questions. It is still not a very user-friendly process, but we're getting there. Yeah, Jackie, I think I speak for both of us when I say... Uh, even those of us who have been in crypto for a while have no idea what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most of the time. Why do I have to do the What? I don't even know how to set up a, I've been told I need a node for runes and ordinals and all this. Like what? Like, I don't even know what that is, but apparently I need it. <laughs> exactly. I literally just bought a computer for runes. <laughs> it's like, what is going on? <laughs> These are crypto problems. These are no one. If you said this to someone at the grocery store, they'd be like, "What?" They they have no idea. Exactly right. So don't feel bad. Ask questions. Always ask questions. No such thing as a stupid question, unless you're from CNN, and then it probably is a stupid question. Uh, there's a few. <laughs> that's that's the rule. That's like my rule of thumb. There's a few folks in here who haven't. Uh, I don't think uh, our friend Anthony Lorenza. I don't know if he's ever spoken in the space before. Maybe once or twice, but he requested a long a little while ago, and I want to get to him. Uh, he's one of our most enthusiastic supporters in the Telegram, very enthusiastic on Twitter, always sharing the content. And by the way, speaking of sharing content, how about uh, how about Jack Posobiec sharing one of the MAGA meme coin memes, meme tweets, world peace? Let's give it up uh, for Steven and the team for developing that one and getting that out there. That got shared all over the place because in, in light of what happened with Iran. But uh, Anthony, if you're ready, if you want to speak, uh, obviously, as Stephen said, you know, we're trying to keep it short and respectful for, for Roger Stone. We respect his time. But, Anthony, the floor is yours. Welcome. Well, what's going on, guys? I had no idea that I requested a hand, but I will take the spotlight. I, I know you guys are probably uh, wondering what my voice sounds like. Well, you see my face, and now you get to hear my voice. So congratulations. You win. Uh, shout out to the team, Sean, Stephen, Jackie, Dom. Welcome to Roger, my Italian friend. I'm sorry if you hear my nun in the background screaming and yelling. They got their friends over playing Scopa. So I'm sure Roger knows what that is. Well done, guys. It's truly incredible what's going on here. Welcome to Roger. And uh, yeah, this is the start of absolutely something amazing. This is nothing yet. It's going to be crazy from here. So hold on tight. And uh, I suggest you buy some more just like I did. Not financial advice. But a little bit of financial advice. Uh, Love it. Let me say. Let, ahead, let me sorry. say two things, if I may. First of all, thank you very much, my Italian American friend. Yes, folks, it is true. Stone is a name plucked out of thin air by some clerk at Ellis Island. So uh, I am half Sicilian, half Italian, and half Hungarian. Although I'm Italian from the waist down. And uh, I'm very proud of my heritage, so I appreciate, Anthony, you shouting it out. Secondarily, I've known Donald Trump for 45 years, but if Sean Farish called me in the middle of the night uh, as Donald Trump, trust me, I could not tell the difference. I really couldn't. Uh, it's, it's uncanny. It's extraordinary how he has totally mastered Donald Trump. Well, that means a lot coming from somebody who has known uh, Donald Trump for a long time. You know, you've known him for a long time, and Roger is the only person who might be just as handsome as me, not more, but just as, and he dresses very well, and he's a tremendous person, I have to say, and his hats, I have to say, his hats are tremendous. I was thinking of maybe one of those uh, MAGA fedoras, maybe we'll do it, maybe we won't do it, we'll talk about it. I'm so excited, folks, that we could finally, it's up in the title now, I changed the title of the space, and Roger, thank you so much for, for your kind words, obviously, uh, I always appreciate everything everything that you've been doing since day one, right, um, but now we can finally put it, it's in the title, it's like a weight 
being lifted off of our chest. No leaks. Nobody leaked anything. We did a tremendous job, too. I have to say, no leaks. Nobody leaked anything. So we're very happy about that as well. Um, Phenomenology is here. Unbelievable political activist. Hosts, hosts some of the greatest spaces on Twitter. Uh, it, was, it was her spaces I first started jumping in, doing, uh, you know, like pseudo Trump press conferences. Now I do it on the radio a lot and stuff. Um, Phenom, I know you probably have some something to say here on a political side of things. You have Roger Stone. If you have a question, I'm just going to give you the floor. Um, you know, super excited to have you here, of course, and uh, in the same space as Roger. Go ahead, Phenom. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm one of the people that doesn't understand how coins work, how crypto works, or anything like that. So if you're like me, you know, these people will help you figure it out. But um, it's just my honor to, you know, I love President Trump so much. um, And I think he knows that. And I'm just honored to be here with everyone and learning. And welcome, Roger. Awesome. Thank you, Phenomen. It's always, always so great to have you here. And um, for, for those of you who aren't already familiar, familiar with Phenomenology, uh, she's an excellent hostess and uh, hosts some of the mo- uh, best quality um, political spaces on the platform. And obviously, there are many times very, very Trump-centric ones. So um, it's so great to have all these just incredible quality people on board here. Uh, guys, we are going to continue to smash it. Again, the theme for tonight is unprecedented. MAGA meme coin, unprecedented. This train cannot be stopped. The Trump train, Trump 2024, cannot be stopped. This project cannot be stopped. The energy is going here. The derivatives may try to keep up. They may try to recreate the energy. But this is where the OG is, baby. Follow the train. Hop on board. Don't miss this. Let's go. Uh, go ahead, Zeno. Uh, yeah, no, I just wanted to point out, I just wanted to point out really quickly that, um, uh, what Mr. Mr. Stone was saying about, uh, the, the, um, polyfy, um, genre, uh, th- this is so, so, so just really quick from the start. This was um, meant to be, uh, you know, how Pepe, the meme, the frog meme, kind of uh, bolstered Trump into the into the uh, 2016 election cycle online. Um, and so it was one of, uh, to my knowledge, it was one of the first non-governmental memes to help push a president into office. Um, not saying that Pepe solely did anything for Trump, but it was connected to his uh, popularity, especially in online circles, right? And so, in I just wanted to to, to mention that in um, in in 2006 there was a there was a uh, an, an I wouldn't say an article, but a, a paper published by um, a I believe. He was brass, I forgot what rank, brass in the United States uh, Marine Corps um, called Mimetic Warfare. This is 2006. And so the meme war didn't take off until, I would say probably people debate about this, but 2012 to 2016 ish, that period. And so online there was this cultural war that was, that was fought sort of using memes, right? Mm. And memes are inherently propaganda. They are the smallest uh, means of spreading an idea or an ideology uh, across a medium and infecting the most amount of people in the least amount of time, uh, usually in a pictorial uh, uh, sort of um, medium. Uh, and that's where we took a lot of inspiration from. Uh, uh, for for MAGA meme coin, the idea being somewhat ironic, uh, uh, in that uh, we're using instead of using Pepe uh, to help to help give Trump political capital, we use Trump to give Trump political capital. Well, and of course, capital capital. Um, and so 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 you're you're very much uh, dead on in 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 I think recognizing that, um, but just also knowing that we're sort of hijacking or co-opting uh, a military strategy that has been released or was released <clears throat> shortly after it was published in 2006, uh, Mimetic Warfare. Uh, memes are not 
just for fun. Memes are are powerful weapons, and they are the weapons of cyber warfare. Um, and we're using them uh, for political ends uh, at this point. And I think that it is both funny, but also extremely powerful um, that we are using Trump uh, as a meme. We're using the man himself, the man, the meme, the legend, um, to meme him into office. Uh, and the fact that we are generating some degree of, you know, capital from that for the cause, uh, ex mimesis, if you will, is is incredible. And it is part of this new sort of uh, online um, mimetic market or cultural market that's occurring uh, very much in crypto, right? Uh, and, and I think it will spread into more of a Web2 crowd uh, under different names like digital assets and stuff like that because they don't like the term NFT and whatnot or token. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to mention that and that um, it, that was forethought that on, on, on our part. The team knew what it was doing uh, when it did that and we had discussions, round, you know, round table discussions about this from the early days when we were uh, cratering to zero on the chart. We were talking about how we could we could mean this into the Trump token of 2024, and I remember being with Stephen and Sean when it when it was you know when the charts and stuff were at their worst and FUD was at its all time high, and um, we weren't very worried at all. You know, we were talking about how we said from the start back in August that this would be the Trump token of 2024, and um, and we had conviction in that the entire time because we had good people, we had a good message. And we had a mission, um, and we had the we had the memes. We had the memes of production. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that. That was beautiful wordplay, by the way. The memes of production, and the memes have they haven't stopped. They really haven't stopped. And Zeno is right. I can I can think back to August, September, October, early November period, um, and you know the haters were out in full force. But see, haters are some of your best fans. They do the most talking about you. And uh, and I, I just loved seeing all of them kind of go away. They all kind of faded away. And they're still around, but, you know, we took off. And the uh, the transparency of the project, the, the uh, charitable contributions are second to none. Go ahead, Roger. Pardon me. Trust me, I generate more than enough hate for everybody on this call. Trust me. Please, trust me. Uh, the unhinged left who keeps insisting that we're the intolerant ones, they are the intolerant ones. Uh, and sure, there's going to be some snarky comments, but controversy is what draws attention, and attention is what sells solid meme coins. So uh, we have let this work for us, which I'm convinced, of course, it will. Gentlemen, carry on. Very well said. I want to get to, uh, he spoke last week, interesting story, um, you know, very enthusiastic about Trump and our project is our friend Fletcher down there. Uh, Fletcher, I remember what, what we what you had shared with us last week, and you don't have to share it again if you don't want to. But uh, I'm curious what you'd like to add tonight. Uh, it was a pleasure hearing from you last week, two weeks in a row. Go ahead, Fletcher. Brother, it's an honor to be on stage with Roger Stone right now. I just feel so good. I feel so pleased. I, I'm I'm like overwhelmed with happiness to have Roger Stone here with us today. Um, Roger, That I have one question for you. Who are you going to vote for? Is it going to be Obama or Trump? Thank you. Let me, let me address your question. First of all, anybody who's active on Twitter spaces knows that I do spaces very, very rarely because they can consume you, you know? So I, I'm honored to be here, but it's one of the few spaces you will find me on. Uh, and going forward, I think that will continue to be true. I'm going to continue to participate, but I, I, don't, I don't do a large number of them. Uh, I, I do think, as I have said, uh, that there's a high possibility uh, that the Democratic Party will replace Joe Biden as their nominee. This could be easily mechanically done, just uh, legally done, just before their convention. Uh, Biden will have... Uh, amassed enough delegates at that time to be nominated. 
He can simply announce his withdrawal from the contest, but not his resignation as president, and release his delegates, who would then be free to vote for any candidate they wanted. At that point, I've suggested that I believe uh, that the Democrats will seek to draft Michelle Obama as potentially their strongest possible candidate. Now, I've been saying this for two years. It is certainly legally possible. It's also becoming politically more likely uh, as Biden continues to trail in the polls uh, and as Biden's policies continue to have a disastrous impact uh, on the country. So uh, I think we have a unique situation where the last president uh, to serve as president then uh, be defeated in a disputed election and then come back and win that White House again was Grover Cleveland. Uh, he was a Democrat, but he was more importantly a New Yorker like Trump who is at heart a New Yorker. So uh, I'm very proud from the beginning to be among those, I think among the first people in the country ever, going all the way back to 1988, to urge Donald Trump to take a serious look at the presidency. Uh, and then uh, I was, uh, I think, first to say, look, uh, I don't think this came out right. Uh, I, I think the, this guy's policies are going to destroy the country. Yes, you do have to run again. I mean, if this were really about Trump, and remember, they tell us constantly that it's all about Trump. It's just, it's all about his ego. Well, if that were true, then he would just walk away. He could have the greatest life in the entire world if he just walked away. Uh, but he doesn't walk away. He's not in this for him. I've known him 45 years. He's in this for us. He's in this because he loves the country, doesn't like seeing what's happening to it. Uh, we had the most strongest, most vibrant economy in our history. We were at peace. We had no new wars. We were successfully bringing our men and women home from combat uh, and from service abroad without the countries they left collapsing into the hands of the enemy when they left. Uh, we had Vladimir Putin at bay. He wouldn't dare invade Ukraine as long as Donald Trump was president. It was Trump who gave Ukraine the first lethal uh, aid. Obama gave them pillows. Donald Trump gave them weapons. Uh, the Chinese would not move on Taiwan if, if Trump were president. Uh, the, we would not have funded Iran. See, we're on both sides in the Middle East. We, the idea that we could unfreeze $106 billion and give it to the Iranians based solely on their word that they would, yes, they will, we promise we'll use this for humanitarian purposes only. I don't know how naive anybody could possibly be. So, None of this would, uh, would uh, have transpired if Trump were president. He is the peace candidate in this election. Uh, and I think uh, every day that goes by, the American people will want peace more and more. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The first president that I ever voted for, I'm 37 years old. The first president I ever voted for was Donald J. Trump. And I believed in him and I believe in him now. And... Um, I hope this goes through. I, I, I don't want to see no, you know, election fraud and these people stealing votes because that's the only right that I have as an American citizen is to vote. I mean, I feel like that's the, the number one thing that you can't take away from me. They took it away 2020, but I don't want them to take it away from me 2024. I'm voting for Trump. Love Trump. I love this coin. I love everybody on this space. Let's fucking go Trump. Boom. Let's go. Love it. Love the energy. And this is where it's going to continue to go in 2024. Believe it. And the uh, we're just getting started. Even the news of this is just getting started. It's just starting to ripple out there right now. And I believe that we're going to see the news cycle correspond with it. Get in where you fit in, folks, because uh, we're gonna have a we're gonna be making uh, we're gonna be making excellent gains and having a lot of fun while we're doing it while supporting uh, uh, and housing homeless veterans while fighting child trafficking. Uh, again, we are nearing in on two million dollars in Ethereum that we have donated to these to these causes. So this is really the win win. I've never been more excited about a project in my life. Uh, this project is ran with complete and total transparency. You can see all of our weekly donations to our charity partners on the homepage of MagaMemeCoin.com. Uh, you can see the uh, the transaction records of of all our donations of all our donations there. 
Um, and if you want to find more information about the project, it's obviously at MagaMemeCoin.com. Also, one thing that hasn't been brought up tonight, uh, in tonight's space anyway, is uh, this is... Donald Trump's number one most valuable position in his in Donald Trump's crypto wallet. Uh, what we did is we sent him one percent of the supply uh, upon launch, and uh, Zena was definitely <laughs> right there at ground zero for that. Uh, and what this did, as uh, this project has uh, grown in popularity and value. Um, it is now uh, far exceeded uh, the value of all his other holdings. Uh, it's 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 in the millions. His, it's worth millions. Trump's Trump's MAGA meme coin position is worth millions, uh, dwarfing uh, the value of his Ethereum and Bitcoin and everything else. So that's another thing uh, that has really started to garnish the attention of the media. And furthermore, nobody nobody garnishes the attention of the media quite like Roger Stone, an absolute firebrand. And my, and as somebody with a Mac marketing background, I have such a strong appreciation for Roger Stone ability to completely and totally uh, command attention and do it in such a edgy, uncompromising way. That's uh, both enlightening and amusing. Roger care to extrapolate. <laughs> Look, I'm a strong believer in branding. The most important book I think I've ever read, other than the Bible, uh, was a book called Confessions of an Advertising Man, written by David Ogilvy. You can find it very easily. It's online. It's in paperback. It's, uh, it was written in the 60s, but it is, it is a, the single most important thing uh, I have used in terms of learning how to communicate through mass communications. Now, when you consider that the book was written in the 60s, it makes references to magazines and newspaper and radio and television. Uh, today, you just take the same lessons in that book, uh, Confessions, Confessions of an Advertising Man by David Ogilvy. It's an extraordinary book. Uh, you, just have to, you just have to recognize that all of the lessons there just can be forwarded now to the Internet age. So instead of how to design a poster, this is one of the chapters is entitled How to Design a Poster, it would be how do you design a splash page. Uh, would, but, but all of the lessons are, are sort, extraordinarily transferable. So it is in that book that I began to understand the beginning of branding. Uh, I do this V for Victory thing that I completely ripped off from Richard Nixon, but you'd be shocked how many people say, hey, do that thing that you do without knowing the history of it. I did it outside the federal courthouse in Washington, D.C. Uh, the judge wasn't too happy about that. She, she told me specifically as part of my gag order that I could never do that again. Uh, but I did do it again, and here I am. So uh, branding is important, and, and therefore I think it's important to get the word out about MAGA meme coin. Because we are, based on everything I've studied, uh, and I, believe me, I did a lot of due diligence uh, be, before I agreed to the strategic partnership. But based on all of my research... We are entirely different than any other product out there in this market. So we're going to make history uh, and uh, why I'm now going to use some of the marketing techniques that I have learned uh, in a 45-year career in American politics to educate people about MAGA mean coin and to educate them about how to buy it because I personally myself still haven't figured that out. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, Roger, you know my line is open to you 24-7, so um, just let me know any other any other questions I could uh, I can uh, be of service to you about. Um, uh, beautifully said, and just a home run answer there, and uh, much appreciated for that. Um, and, and we just got such a quality uh, group of individuals that we are assembling here. I believe that we are putting together a dream team, a dream team of sorts. I use the A-team uh, analogy earlier, uh, and I believe that uh, that analogy is coming uh, into reality. Um, look, we've got we've got Sean Dom, the legendary Roger Stone, Jackie Dutton, phenomenology. By the way, phenomenology and I uh, have a, a, a pretty long history together uh, uh, through X, through Twitter, and. Uh, I just had to reach out to her because I saw that she was struggling with some um, chronic, uh, chronic, pretty debilitating chronic health issues. Um, and I actually have, uh, 
I'm no stranger to that, and I've uh, fortunately have pulled myself out of much much of that. Uh, and so well, when I saw her, I'm like, I got to get her on board. Uh, we're gonna do this. Uh, and she's gives so much to the uh, adds so much to the MAGA populist uh, community. Uh, and it's so great to be onboarding people where this is their first experience with crypto. A lot of crypto projects talk about the potential of doing that. And it usually just equates to being a bunch of freaking hot air. But here with Magamine Coin, we are actually doing that. We are actually onboarding Trump fans, onboarding um, people involved in the, in the MAGA move that have no previous experience with, uh, with cryptocurrency. And now uh, that is only going to be put on steroids as we move forward into this election season. Uh, anyway, I don't know if you have anything more to add to that phenomenon. Well, I, yeah, you're one of the first people I met here on X doing spaces, and we've built a really fun friendship doing that. And I didn't really talk about um, what I was going through, but there's only 5,000 people that have been diagnosed with what I have. Uh, I won't bore the audience with that. <clears throat> it's in my bio, but I just thought it was so neat what they were doing, but I just wasn't in a place to do much. And he just, uh, the whole team here made a generous you know, donation to me, uh, and I'm so proud to be part of that. And I'm so grateful because you guys are doing really good things. And I'm, uh, it's taken a lot for me as far as mobility and other things, but I'm still here fighting from my bed for President Trump, teaching people how to become precinct committee men, how to become poll workers, how to become poll watchers, getting the word out, doing. MAGA money bombs for people to donate to President Trump's campaign, and now I'm proud to be learning and talking about what you guys do. So there's no stopping us. We're going to fight till the end. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, pleasure, pleasure to have you, uh, and it's uh, my friend. It's just it's so it's so great to be bringing on board. Uh, some of the people I just have uh, the utmost respect for uh, out here. And so it's, it's all coming together, folks, all coming together, folks. Um, uh, Sean, you've been, you've been quiet for a bit. I don't mean to uh, bogart the mic, sir. No, no, it's fine. I, I love the way that the conversation naturally flows. And I love everything that Roger has been adding to the, uh, adding to the space and everything. And, and all of our speakers, I have to be honest. I mean, it's a different viewpoint from every person. I'm so happy. I'm just stoked. Uh, to see somebody like Roger Stone on board with us. It's just, it's amazing. The enthusiasm is through the roof. Uh, and it's coming at a great time because, you know, over the course of really the last couple of weeks, we've been bombarded with a lot of negativity. Think about what happened on Easter uh, with that being, you know, marred by the Biden administration as a trans day of visibility because they're not visible enough. Uh, think about all the illegals that are coming across the border, the stuff that they're throwing at at uh, President Trump right now, not just with the the Alvin Bragg Twinkies trial, um, but with the Letitia James judgment and all of this garbage that's just been happening. We've been getting pounded with negative news, negative news, negative news, and then comes this anomaly called Tuesday Nights, uh, where we talk about our project, what's coming, and you know we've been hinting at it for months. There's a major partnership in the works. It's coming. It's happening. It's happening. It's coming. And, and now here we are. Uh, and it's been delivered. And I think you're right, Stephen. And everybody who keeps saying it, this is only the beginning. Guys, it's April. We have been saying Zeno. I remember you've been saying it, Stephen. You've been saying it. We've all been saying it since the day this token launched, right around the, when the first couple spaces started happening, that, you know, the, the real go time, Sistine Research has been saying this too, is going to be, you know, 30, 60, 90 days before election time. But before then, it's going to be up to us, the community and everybody to get on board and to just drive this thing. And there are nobody, there's nobody in the game right now, in any game, that is a better driver of a message than a Dom Lucre or a, a Roger Stone or Jackie with, with what she does with crypto and Steve and how creative you've been and everybody who's just involved. It's just really, really cool. Uh, to be a part of a team like this, um, this early with the cause. It's all about the cause. You know, I wouldn't want to be involved with something that's not with it where I'm at. And, and I, I think we're all pretty much, especially on the team, on the same page there. Um, you know, I mean, I'm sure if we all sat down and, and had drinks for an evening, we'd have our differences. But we're there for the cause. We're helping veterans. We're helping kids, uh, you know, with, with regards to getting out of child trafficking, fighting child trafficking. And that speaks volumes. You can't find it anywhere else. And now we've got star power. You know, we're assembling, uh, as, as Stephen called it, the A-team. 
or the dream team or, you know, that heat Miami heat team with LeBron James and Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh and all them. And they talked about how many championships are we going to win. I think our team is going to win more than any other dream team in history. And I'm just, I'm just super stoked about it. I don't know if y'all could tell, but I'm, I'm very excited. And, uh, you know, and, and that's just where I'm at. So don't mistake my quietness <laughs> for anything other than I'm just, as Jackie said, been smiling the entire time. Um, with that said, I think we're nearing the end tonight. As much as I don't want this space to end, um, I do want to go. Let's go over to uh, let's go to Dom Lucre first. Uh, Dom, closing thoughts. How are you feeling about this partnership, about the project going forward? What's up, man? I've been uh, pretty stoked about it ever since I found out that Mr. Stone was going to be coming on. Uh, Mr. Stone, he's a very great, very great man. You guys said everything there can be said about him. And very well dressed. I got to actually make his best dress list of last year. He's very kind and one of the most intelligent men I've ever had the chance to get to meet. So definitely excited to have him here and have the chance to be speaking with him on these Tuesdays. Moving forward, I agree with what everyone's saying. This isn't even the start. It will be election season. Meme wars are going to start up. <clears throat> There's going to be backlash. Democrats are going to be pissed. Uh, like you say, the haters will appear more so in November, especially the bots. is going to push the message further. There's going to be a whole lot more media attention and a whole lot more clicks and just general eyes on this project going into the election season. Appreciate that, Dom. Um, uh, Jackie, you want to head up for uh, closing thoughts? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just so glad we can all talk about it now. I hate keeping secrets. Christmas is the worst for me. It's just, it's so nice that we can just give this gift and everybody knows now. <laughs> um, so, uh, within the next week, crypto wise, look out for, um, all of the events around the having. Uh, there's a huge crypto conference going on right now in Dubai called Token 2049 or, I don't know, it's 4029, I don't know, but, um, Dubai is currently under like three feet of water and your favorite influencer is probably trapped. So say a prayer and um, yeah, just uh, always, you know, make sure you protect your seed phrase with your life, your phone, don't connect to sketchy sites. Don't click any weird links. Um, there was something that said uh, trust wallet figured out that, hackers on the dark web are trying to use some loophole through iMessage. So if you have a lot of crypto on your iPhone, you might want to just disable the iMessage feature for now until that gets updated. Um, and otherwise, um, you know, always just uh, be safe out there. Don't don't wave your phone around. It, it's your, your wallet, your money, your life, you know. Um, so be very careful with that. And if you have any questions, as always, don't hesitate to ask. We do not do airdrops. We do not give away free crypto. The Trump Project does not, the MAGA meme coin does not do that. So, um, you know, it never hurts to just pause and ask. You don't need to just go ahead and click right away. You will always regret that. So exercise a little patience. And otherwise, yeah, I can't wait for all the weeks to come. It's just been so great. And uh, we're just so excited to have Roger and everybody here. I, I can't, I couldn't have said it better myself. The only thing I could say about that is I use an Android. So I drive iPhone users crazy. I am Mr. Green Bubble, the greatest bubble the world's ever seen. We love the green bubbles. They're tremendous. They work all the time. People don't like it, but I love it. So I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> just, I always like to poke fun at my, uh, my iPhone friends. You know, I get all your features about two years before the iPhone gets it. Anyway, um... <laughs> I, anyway, I have a final question. Oh, I have a, I hear somebody is going off with some Morse code in the back. Uh, Phenom, go ahead. So for Mr. Stone, my grandmother, Rosa Pascaletti, would always throw some salt over her shoulder whenever she was making Sunday gravy. She swore that you couldn't make gravy without it. And I'm here to ask you, since she's not any longer, is that true? That is completely and totally true. Uh, my grandmother, whose real recipe was passed down to my mother, which was passed down to me. There's a lot of debate about this. Let me try to explain to people. It, there's a certain geographic section in the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut area where sauce is referred to as gravy. Now, a lot of people think gravy is brown or they think of turkey gravy or chicken gravy. No, this is tomato gravy. 
you can call it sauce, you can call it gr gravy, it doesn't really matter what you call it, as long as you use San Marzano tomatoes. Now, San Marzano is not a brand of tomatoes, so San Marzano is a style of tomato that is grown in a very specific valley in Italy. Uh, when you see tomatoes marked with D-O-P, D period, O period, P period, that, that's a certification that what you're getting is a genuine San Marzano tomato. Uh, I started giving out my mother's, my grandmother's recipes on 77 WABC Radio on Sunday afternoons. I had no idea how popular this was going to turn out to be. So uh, last weekend we did uh, my father's favorite was spaghetti and pork chops in, in, a, in a light tomato sauce. Uh, my meatballs was very popular. Your, your mother is a very smart woman. That's very clear. Thank you so much. It's great to hear that culinary insight uh, from Roger Stone. And he, he saw, listen, the Italian side, uh, the sauce gravy argument always makes for, uh, for good dinner table conversations. Uh, Roger, we're doing closing thoughts now. Um, I want to get to you, the man who has done nothing wrong, folks. Roger Stone did nothing wrong. I remember seeing the raid, the original raid. You know, CNN was somehow got tipped off to it. And I was so furious. I was working for Sherwin-Williams at the time. And I almost threw my phone into the paint mixer and turned it on. I was so mad. But, Roger, closing thoughts. First space with us. Pleasure to have you here. What's up? Uh, I appreciate that very much. Look, uh, uh, there's two ways to look at this. Uh, on the morning of January 25th, 29, fully SWAT-clad uh, FBI agents uh, brandishing fully automatic uh, M4 assault weapons surrounded uh, and then and then stormed my home uh, to arrest me for the completely fabricated crime of lying to Congress uh, in my voluntary testimony under oath regarding uh, WikiLeaks disclosures and Russian collusion that I literally knew nothing about and they could produce no evidence that I knew anything about. Uh, and I was arrested at 6.06 .06 in the morning. But at 6.11 in the morning, my lawyer, who did not know that I had been arrested and that my wife had been terrified because uh, she is a hard of hearing, she woke up looking down the barrel of two guns. She didn't know whether it was a home invasion or what had transpired. She didn't hear the ruckus of my arrest and pounding on the door. The FBI agents brought this giant battering ram up to the front door as if I wasn't going to open it. Uh, and they said I had to be arrested in this way because I was a flight risk. Yet four hours later, when I was arraigned at the federal courthouse, they didn't ask for any cash bond for my release, proving they never believed I was a, a flight risk. Uh, at 6.06, .06, I was arrested. At 6.11, my lawyer gets a text message from uh, someone at CNN who says, your client has just been arrested. And he says, really, arrested for what? And, they, and they, this person at CNN texted my lawyer, a copy of my sealed indictment. The indictment was not unsealed until 10.30 that morning. This was at 7.07. .07. It had no uh, court markings, no timestamp on it. Uh, but when you open the metadata tags, uh, you can see the person who wrote it, Andrew Weissman, uh, the de facto head of the Mueller Goon Squad, uh, and now the chief uh, legal analyst for MSNBC. This is a man who's Enron case was unanimously overturned by the Supreme Court, uh, and the judge uh, admonished him for prosecutorial misconduct. So when you see him on TV talking about how great the Enron case is, you got to look that up. Uh, my wife and I went through a, a horrific two and a half year uh, struggle. We lost everything, frankly. We lost uh, our home. We lost our savings. We lost a small account that we were building for the college education of our grandchildren. I had to sell my car. Uh, we lost most, but thank God, not all of our insurance. I was gagged by the judge. So I couldn't travel freely without permission. I couldn't speak. I couldn't write. Couldn't do any of the things that I do to make a living. Uh, and they put ungodly pressure on me to testify falsely against Trump. That's what they wanted the entire time. That's why they fabricated this. Uh, and uh, look, I, I thank Jesus Christ every day. I prayed fervently to be, uh, to be uh, saved, to be lifted up. The president saw that I had done nothing wrong. He saw I was being persecuted as a way to get at him. Uh, and uh, yes, he did commute my sentence, but he also gave me a full and unconditional presidential pardon, which if you go online right now, you'll have a really hard time finding. It's amazing. 
So, uh, look, I, I thank God for every day. Uh, some of you know my wife uh, was diagnosed with very aggressive stage 4 cancer almost immediately after my pardon. Doctors were not very optimistic. Uh, I, I can tell you through the grace of God, she's now going on three years cancer-free. She had some minor surgery to deal with some of the side issues very recently. She's doing really, really great. So, uh, I, I'm, thank you. I, I'm grateful to be included in MAGA Mean Coin. Uh, it's a new frontier for me. I'm going to be learning as I go along. But one thing I can do is sell. I know how to sell. So I can tell people the attributes uh, of buying this coin, of purchasing this coin and telling others about it. Yes, I benefit. I disclose that fully. There's no question about it. So uh, so the, the, the new ad on the front of my uh, website at stonezone.com is a sponsored ad. Uh, on the other hand, uh, everybody here understands that this is additive, like politics. Uh, this is about inclusion, not exclusion. I think we have an exemplary coin here. It makes a lot of sense when you read about it. But above all, let me finish by saying this. I wanted to own the crypto coin that Donald Trump owns. That's what I wanted, and now I have done so. So I'm proud to be on board. Thank you so much, Roger. Really appreciate having you. We're proud to have you here, and uh, we're excited for the road ahead. Very, very excited. Happy that you're happy to hear that your your wife is doing well. That's amazing. Cancer sucks. I hate it. Uh, I know a lot of people have been touched by that awful disease, and as you said, you know, by the grace of God, um, and a lot of people are finding God lately, and it's it's helping. I'm 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 a hundred percent sure of that. I can speak about that personally, but I won't do it here. Um, Stephen, I want to I want to toss it to you. I know uh, you're excited. Well done with uh, with this partnership, as everyone had said. Uh, how about you take us out for the night? I mean, folks, is this worth the wait? <laughs> worth the wait or what? Uh, I, again, uh, thank you so much to, to Roger. He and I have been corresponding uh, for uh, about this for for a bit and just ironing out all the details. So happy to finally be here tonight with him. Uh, and pr so proud to be, be partnering with him on this. And, uh, honestly, Roger's first space with us, in my opinion, has been nothing short of, uh, both epic and just, just mind blowing, really. Um, look, we're only in April. We're only in April. This isn't financial advice, but I think there's going to be a lot of people that wish that they didn't seize this window before things go into hyper overdrive. We have been we have been establishing this project with an incredibly strong, respectable, um, stable market cap, particularly for this scene. Now, historically in this space, when you see a project that uh, is as seasoned as this one is, uh, trade sideways at the level that it has been, with the stability that it has been. Um, that that usually spells incredibly incredibly bullish signs ahead. Now we're not even talking about the fact that uh, the whole meadow that surrounds this project is going to be the most talked about uh, meta and person on planet Earth uh, as as election season keeps heating up. So all of these things uh, accumulating together. I believe we are positioning this project to be uh, really kind of in the eye of a perfect storm here. Super honored to be here and bring uh, both Dom Lucre and Roger Stone aboard our team going forward. 2024 belongs to Trump. If you're not excited, you haven't been paying attention, baby. People often ask me. People often ask me. Thank you. People often ask me, real deal, Stephen Steele, where do you think MAGA meme coin is going? Here it comes. Well, I, I got one word for you. Actually, I've got two, three words for you, and this is where we're going, baby. Believe it! Billions and billions and billions.